Hey everybody, welcome back to another Emory Security YouTube video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Sunshine CTF 2025. So in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the web section. Let's jump right into it. This is a space feel theme that they have going on this year. And it says infiltrate the Lunar Auth admin panel and gain access to the super secret flag artifact. So let's head on over to the website and we can see here that it just has absolutely nothing. Uh, the mission is to access the administrator panel, as we can see right here, but there's not really a whole lot going on. Again, we always like to check out the source code to see what's happening. And let's just see if there's anything interesting in here. It doesn't really look like there's much happening. We do see right here that it says we have amazing auth, no rob robots are allowed. So that's something interesting to think about. And when we see something having to do with robots, we can go over to the slash robots.txt and take a look at what we have. How are these annoying search engine bots scraping the admin panel page? So we do have the admin endpoint and we can come over here and just paste it in. And we can see here that now we do have a login. So the commander as well as the passphrase. So we could do some basic stuff like some basic SQL injections and we could just see that it says invalid credentials through both. So that's not going to be the way that we have to do it. Again, let's check page source one more time to see what we have to work with. And here we can see that it says real username, real password that looks to be base64 encoded. And then it'll check to see whether or not they're real or not. And then if they are real, it'll continue and submit. And if it's not, it'll say invalid credentials. So this is probably the way that we have to go about doing things. So we'll just come over to our terminal and we'll type in echo. We'll paste in that base64 and then we'll just do a base64 tech D. And that looks to be the username. And we'll just come over here again and we will take this base64 and we'll do the exact same thing. So we'll just base64 encode it again. And we can see here that there is the password. So let's paste this on into the admin panel. So we have Ali as well as the secure password with a bang at the end. And when we do this and click initiate docking, we can see that we do retrieve the first flag. Client side auth is never a good idea. So we'll copy this over and let's paste it into the challenge. So the next challenge is intergalactic webhook service. And we could see I got tired of creating webhooks from an online site. So I made my own webhook service. It even works in outer space. Be sure to check it out and let me know what you think. I'm sure it is the most secure webhook service in the universe. So we do have the URL here as well as the source code. So let's quickly strip down the source code and see what we have to work with. And we'll do an unzip on the source.zip. We can see that we do have a few things, one notably being the app.py. So we could just do a code with a period and that'll open up our current working directory. We'll trust the author and we'll head on over to the source app.py so we can see what we have to work with. First things first is we'll take a look at the root, which is just a basic location and it just renders over the index.html. There's also something that I guess prohibits specific IP addresses such as private IP addresses. So uh, 127001 or localhost or 000, all that is going to be canceled and we're not going to be able to use that. We see here that we do have the registration page, which takes on the URL. And whenever we see a URL, as many of you may know from previous episodes, that most likely means that we have some form of SSRF. And this is a special kind of SSRF that I'm going to explain here in just a minute. We also have a trigger post request with which comes with an ID. And if everything works out, then we may be able to retrieve some information from the back end. Additionally, up here, we can see that there is a flag handler and we have a slash flag path and it's going to be hosted on this. So one, two, seven, zero, zero, one on port 5001. So we'll just come back over here and go to the website that we need to work with. And it says webhook URL. And then we can just apply the URL here. Again, if we try to do something like HTTP one, two, seven, zero, zero, one, and click register, we'll see that we do get the IP is not allowed. That is because of those protections in place previously. Now, one way to get around these kind of issues is something called SSRF DNS rebinding. 
And essentially what that means is it's going to flip flop between two different IP addresses. So let's say one of them is going to be 127.0.0.1. The other one is going to be 8888, which is just Google. And it's going to continuously flip flop through a URL. So if we do rebinder tooling, we could see here that we do have this website, which does DNS rebinding services. And here, as we could see, the first address is going to be the, our local host. And the second address is going to be whatever we want to put here. In our case, we're just going to put 8888 for simplicity's sake. And this is going to give us this URL here, which is just hex for the local host and then hex as well for the 8888 or Google. So what we could do now is we can head on over to the challenge and we'll just get rid of this tab because we don't need it anymore. So we can go over to here and just type in HTTP colon slash slash and we'll paste in this rebinder address. When we click on register, we do receive an ID. Now this sometimes does not work first try because again, they're flip flopping between both the 127.0.0.1 and the 8888 IP address. So if it doesn't work, try to send it again and again and again until you receive this message, which is the ID, the status and the URL. But once you have this, then you can come over here and you can click on the webhook ID. And again, sometimes it's going to show, sometimes it's not. But as you can see here, it does showcase the URL and it also shows an error. So something went wrong. And this is because we didn't supply the port that we need to access. And the port that we need to access is in 5001 because we're going on to 127.0.0.1, 5001. And we also saw that we needed to put the slash flag because that in the source code is where the flag is being stored, as we can see right here. So knowing this information, we can come back over here and click register. And there is that error message that I was talking about. So we'll just go back and click register again. And it looks like it hasn't flopped back to the other IP address. So we'll just continue doing this until we receive the ID, which we do here. And when we come back over here, we can quickly copy this UUID, go to the webhook ID back here and click launch. And again, we are receiving that error message. You can again do this through Burp Suite if you don't want to continuously go back and forth. But we can see here that we do retrieve the flag. DNS rebinding is super cool. So we'll copy the flag and we will paste it into the challenge. The next challenge is Lunar Shop and it says we have amazing new products for our gaming service. Unfortunately, we don't sell our unreleased flag product yet. So we can head on over to this website and check it out and we see that we have view products and then product one. And whenever you see something having to do with an identifier, you always want to try a simple SQL injection attack. So we could just try something basic like a single quote click on enter and we could see that we do retrieve an error message and let's try to do this again to see what happens and it looks like something is going on with this so I don't really know what that error message means exactly maybe we could try to put something else so for instance we could put something like tables click enter and we could see here that it says no such column for tables if you look up this specific error message on Google and then type in SQL error, we can find out what specific SQL it's using. And it looks like it's going to be using the SQLite database because that appears to be the consensus on all of these different things. We'll see if there's anything having to do with this. So we'll come over to Portswigger and just see if they have anything in store for us. And we could try something like this. So when we head on over to the products page and then we could just type in again one, we'll leave that alone. And we could just put in select. Now we could see that in this table, there are four different columns. So we're going to put null, 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 and then we'll add in another null. And we'll just see if anything here happens. And it doesn't really look like it happened all too well. So let's try to just get rid of that. And it looks like we have none across the board. So we could try something as simple as just doing call one and see if it reflects. And it doesn't seem to be reflecting. So maybe we could try to do something like call one with quotes around. And that also does not seem to really be working because now we see just the product as a whole. So that's not what we want to do. So something that we can also try is just putting a zero here and seeing and it looks like that did work. So now we can see that it does reflect on to the page. And what we could do here is we can try to extract information from the database since now we can see the information coming from the column. 
So in this case, we'll just put something like union select name, and then we'll keep the nulls. Maybe we'll try to do from, let's do SQLite master, where type is equal to table. And let's see if that works. And we could see here that we do retrieve a flag table. So what we could do instead is we could just do select flag. And then instead of doing SQLite master, we'll just get rid of that and then just supply it with flag with the couple dashes. And we could see here that we do retrieve the flag baby SQL injection. This is known as error based SQL injection. We did not do error based. We ended up doing it through union based injection. So we'll copy it over to our challenge and that is solved. For the last challenge that we're gonna take a look at is WebForge. So when we click on it, it just gives us a note saying that we are allowed to use fuzzing tools, but not crawling tools. And we'll go about checking out this web application. So it says, welcome to SpaceForge, your intergalactic web tools platform. And then a little bit about the tool. And it looks like it is an SSRF tool. So when we click on launch SSRF tool, we can see that it brings us to a slash fetch endpoint, but provides a 403 forbidden missing or incorrect SSRF access header. So we need to figure out what access header we're missing. And we can, I guess, do some snooping around the application to see if maybe there's any other context clues or anything that we can work with. So let's check out the page source and see if there's anything there. And it doesn't really look like there's all too much. Looks like there's a little bit of JavaScript, but this just creates the stars in the background and really doesn't do us a whole lot. Doesn't look like there's any JS files either on this web page. So we're not going to, I guess, have to do too much with that. Again, we can go to our go to, which is the slash robots.txt. And we can see that it says internal SSRF testing tool requires special auth header to be set to true. And we have two disallowed endpoints. So the slash fetch and then the slash admin. So we need to figure out a way to access this fetch endpoint, but we also need a special header that's set to true. And one way we can go about fuzzing headers is by using something called fuff. And if you don't know what fuff is, it is a fantastic fuzzing tool and you can basically fuzz anything on a web request. So if it's a header, you could fuzz it. If it's a parameter, you can fuzz it. If it's something having to do, let's say, with an endpoint where you potentially have an IDOR, you can also fuzz that. So there's a lot of things that you can do. So here's the command. We're going to do attack u with the URL slash fetch. We're going to do attack h and then set it to fuzz is set to true. And what this is going to do is this is going to take our word list and between each line, insert the payload. So let's say it's x forwarded four, it'll put x forwarded four colon true into the request and see whether or not it comes back with a status code of 200. In addition to that, if you don't have sec lists, be sure to download it by typing sudo apt install sec list on Kali and you will have it located at user share word list sec list. Inside of the discovery web content, there is a directory called a burp suite param miner. There's this lowercase headers file that can be used to fuzz headers. So again, we're looking for the status code of 200. When we click on enter, we can see that allow is being shown. So what we can do now is let's just go back over to platform and let's just launch the SRF tool, except let's also intercept this. So we'll click on intercept, launch it, and inside of the request, we will just put an allow true. We'll forward on all the requests, and we can see that we now have access to the SSRF testing tool. This looks like a standard SSRF vulnerability where we have a target URL, we click request, and it's going to send a request to the internal services. We need to figure out what port is open on the back end first before we can do additional attacks. So we could try to do some basic stuff. So we'll just try to do HTTP colon slash slash, and then 127001. This is going to be hosted on port 80. And we're going to also need to set the allow true header. So we'll just come back over here. We'll click launch and we'll go about setting this to allow is true. When we click on forward, we could see that we are receiving an error message indicating that the connection is refused, saying that the port is not open on the local host. And we can create a simple script that brute forces all the different kinds of ports, one through six, five, five, three, five, 
But because I didn't want to brute force a bunch, I didn't want to brute force over 65,000 requests going toward the server. I just chose a few that I thought could work. So let me quickly pull up the script and show you what I mean. So when we take a look at the script, we can see that it grabs the URL. It sets the allow parameter to true. And we have a bunch of ports here. So port 80, 8080, 8000, so on and so forth. We're going to loop over each port and set the parameter to be URL with the localhost colon port. And then we're going to simply post request if it doesn't have connection refused inside of the response, say that the port was found. So we can head on over here and we can just type in Python 3 webforge.py and we could see that port 8000 is allowed on the local host. Let's come back over here and we're just going to, instead of continuously going back and forth, we're just going to take this last request and we're going to send it off to the repeater. So let's do 127.001 and then we'll just type in 8000. We'll click request and we'll send it off to repeater. So we can see what is going on. And it says that it's forbidden again because I forgot to put the allow true. So we can set it to allow true, click send. And we could see here if we render it that we are receiving some data back. Now this looks like the same application just on the internal service. And we need to figure out a way to access something else other than the stuff that we already know. If you remember though, inside of the robots.txt, there was also a slash admin. So if we come back over here and we type in slash admin, we click on send, we could see that now we receive a different error message and it says you're trying to access slash admin but forgot the template parameter. So if we add the template parameter and we just type in something random like hello, we can click send just to make sure that it's working and we can see that it does reflect back. Now, whenever you see something having to do with templates, the first thing that should come to mind is server side template injection. And because we're going to just assume that this is going to be a Ginger Python application, we can try a basic payload like seven times seven. And if we do have an SSTI vulnerability, it should return 49. So when we come back over here, we can see that it does return 49. And now we need to figure out a different way to go about retrieving the flag, which would be hosted on the backend system, which will probably need RCE4. So we can head on over to our browser after we turn off the proxy because we don't need that anymore. And we could just type in something like SSTI, payload, all the things. And we can see if there's anything that we can work with within the payload section of Python for payload, all the things. We're going to go down to Jinja 2 and we're going to want remote code execution. So we can try some of these and see if they work. So we'll just come back over to repeater and we'll replace the seven times seven and we'll also url encode it by holding down control and u at the same time that's going to url encode our payload for us and we could see that it says nope so there is a filter in place on this specific challenge and we're going to need to figure out a different way to go about bypassing it lucky for us though payload all the things does have a filter bypass section which we can then use so we'll copy on over this payload and we'll see if this works instead. So we'll just paste it on in to our repeater and we can see that it's grabbing the ID command from the back end. So when we click on enter, we can see that we are retrieving RCE, which is great because now we can go about trying to identify the flag and catting it out. So we could just type in LS just to see what files there are on the file system. And we can see that there is a flag.txt. However, there is another bypass that we're going to need to work with, which is if we try to do cat flag.txt, we're going to see that we're getting that same error message, the no, and we need to find a way to go about getting the flag. Now you could try different bypasses like the IFS bypass or the TAC bypass. Maybe they're not using the cat command. Maybe you have to use TAC to see if you can access the flag. But when you do that, nothing still works. It still says no. So the way to go about doing it actually is quite simple. All you really have to do is just type F and star. And essentially what this is going to do is this is going to fill in the blanks. So it's going to cut all the files that start with the letter F. And when we do that and click send, we can see that we do retrieve the flag. So if we head on over to pretty and we scroll down a little bit, we can retrieve the flag this way. So let's come back over here and submit the flag. But that'll do it for the Sunshine CTF 2025. 
I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. And please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.